Hey, how's it going y'all? Jukum here. Welcome back to another video. This time I wanted to talk about something in the Pokemon community I feel like a lot of people could be doing better. And to showcase that, I'm going to be using my PowerPoint presentation. Except, not really, because it's actually Google Slides. <laughs> uh, but anyway, what? okay, what are optimal finishers slash round enders? I'm using this to help me and you, because <laughs> I cannot do a scripted video. Wait. <laughs> anyway. What I mean by an optimal round finisher. Basically, last the last string of hits that go into a finisher that ends the round. Basically, uh, you see me a lot. I use like an image. To, image is shown. Whenever there's like 18 health left, I do a least storm. Like, I do that. It's basically that. It's basically, a combo that can finish the round without worrying, 100% guaranteed. This definitely takes into account the opponents like defensive buffs like rage synergy burst defense buffs especially within rage's case because they're almost dead anyway so they're gonna have it guaranteed and the freaking scaling will just be like <laughs> oh my god i bought my mic i'm so sorry and the way that these are so different than other combos is that they're usually longer and they're not really the most optimal combos normally it's just in the rage that they become optimal because of various reasons before I get into those reasons, I want to explain why this is important. Like I said, this guarantees the round win 100% guaranteed. You don't have to worry about any more mix-ups, because I've seen it plenty of times where someone will just immediately die after they do a round shift and they have the opponent has 1 HP. Especially since Rage boosts attack 2, and then they lose the next mix-up, and then immediately just the momentum shifts completely. So like I said, if it's just a guaranteed round win, it's a good thing to know. This is a very like specific thing to know, but it's definitely very, very important in my opinion, and something that at least I do a lot. I know people like Shadowcat will do it a lot, and Mutator will do it a lot to like guarantee the round win. Uh, Mutator more so, I feel, with like his grabs. He you know his grab ranges in Rage, uh, which is definitely a part of it, but I'm more, I'm more so talking about the combos. It is good to keep those in mind though, like what, what damage range your opponent's in for a grab. Like I said before, I'm, I'm saying that a lot, my apologies. Uh, this leaves the opponent with 1 HP after wall swipe because obviously a wall swipe does not KO them. Uh, and honestly, if you learn to do these, it'll help your game plan with like on the fly combos. Like you have to do like a specific combo because of a weird like wall splat or like a weird angle that your opponent's getting hit at. It helps a lot in those like expanding your, your mind when it comes to expanding your mind. <laughs> expanding your like thought process when it comes to like combo routes that you can do like maybe they won't be like like optimal in like certain situations but they could be very useful for recognizing when a combo is going to be dropped by something else so like it's a general thing that could help you in more situations than just like the finisher next traits of good moves um a lot of single hitting moves that do a lot of like damage usually like grabs so like leaf storm for example 18 damage guaranteed usually these are really really good for like the ender of the combo like all my combos like end in least storm when they have 18 or less health i Azuna drop them <laughs> and they just immediately plummet to the earth's core um and of course i'm using septal a lot in these examples because he's my main and he's like a very good character who uh uses these a lot uh multi-hitting moves like any move that can do more than one damage per hit for a multi-hit like septal's jy uh, especially his JY because he can angle and do various things with it to combo into itself or something else. Um, those are really really good at stacking up the damage back to back when there's like full, full scaling on the combo. Especially with those with like zero PSP because you could easily just spam them over and over and over. At least for certain characters. Obviously characters like Lucario aren't going to be able to spam their JY forever. But like multi-hits or like any multi-hits. Not even JY. It's just like multi-hits in general. And here's the big one. Moves that do a lot of damage because they have guaranteed, they ignore the scaling rule, they do a bunch of damage just because you landed it. What do I mean by that? I mean moves like Giga Drain. It does drain you by 30 HP every time, no matter the scaling. Same thing with Dream Eater from Dark Cry when he's in Nightmare. And this is what I meant when I brought up Shadow Cat before, because he already is very, very good at using Dream Eater to finish off rounds. I forgot how much, I, I have it written down, we'll get to it. But he's really, really good at just ending those rounds with Dream Eater. Uh, and those type of moves that do a set amount of damage are very, very useful, whether they're like a round finisher or a round, st or a round finisher or the combo starter. And lastly, for good traits, good moves, obviously your burst attack, because it does a great amount of damage. That said, it's a bit more niche because it's obviously a very specific situation. 
uh, when this is already a pretty niche thing to begin with. But if you do a burst stack normally, it wouldn't really be optimum because of the wall splat. But like I mentioned before, who cares about the wall splat? They're gonna live anyway. Usually they'll only be barely in, like, t a tiny bit more. Like I was testing with Empoleon before. Like it only did like three more damage, but like that's three more damage that you could do have done to kill the opponent. So, <laughs> you know, I feel like it's kind of worth it in that. Obviously burst attacks that have low hits at the startup. Uh, are a lot better because then, like, so I guess for example, Blaziken's does a million hits, and if you're trying to do a long combo uh, with Blaziken, you might just do a phase shift because of uh, how many hits are in it. So stuff like, I guess I'm pr I'm privileged with Empoleon and Sceptile because they only have one hit and they always go into it. <laughs> no, but just like stuff like that. A lot of characters have, like, a few hits. Like, I think Wave Owl has, like, three hits for his burst attack. Um, yeah. And then here's just a list of like great moves. I've already mentioned a lot of these like great moves that you can use. Like JY, get I have already mentioned all Sceptiles because I'm that biased. <laughs> no, but for like Empoleon, he does 16 damage with JY. That's actually kind of nuts. It does do eight hits though, so you always gotta be aware of that. But uh if you're, you just need like a quick round finisher and you have the uh, like hits to spare, it's just like JY, especially since it loops into itself. So if you like miss a few hits, you can just combo into itself again. Or jewel pick for that matter. Uh, same with Waterfall. Waterfall is a great finisher because it does the most amount of damage when fully scaled off of uh, any of his like Aqua Jet, Defog, that type of stuff. Uh, some moves I haven't talked about yet besides obviously Dream Eater. I, I don't know why I listed that when I was going to talk about it before. <laughs> but Mutator... Mutator. <laughs> well, I asked Mutator about this. Uh, Mewtwo's Fire Punch combo with Ice Punch, Thunder Punch. Uh, that does 24 guaranteed and even by itself, like it does a lot of hits. But if you land just Fire Punch, it's still 8 damage, which is a really good uh, move for like a, like, I feel like it's just optimal in like certain combos to begin with, if you have like one hit left anyway. Um, but just like, 24 damage is a lot, uh, if you need to just do a very big move to finish off your opponent and you see they have 24 left. Uh, yeah, and then Bug Bite is another one of those moves like Giga Drain, that drains a set amount of HP. Uh, in total, it does 28 damage, including the drained HP, if I recall. Um, it's already used a lot, especially by people by tech. Usually, it's just a combo ender to begin with, so I just wanted to include it because it's like the safest like move that like recognizes like the optimal round ender for a character like Scizor. Um And now I just want to get to kind of get to buy get to why they might not be used that much. Um, bread and butter combos. Uh, people kind of have like, it's just ingrained into their mind to just do a certain combo over and over again without mixing it up. Uh, obviously, can't really blame them, it's the safest thing they can do, but in those situations they could have obviously done like something more optimal in that case, uh, just because it was enraged. Autopiling like that, uh, like, makes sense, understandable. Um, that mindset can only get you so far though, I feel. It's the safest, like I said. But <clears throat> after a certain level, you're definitely going to want to like experiment more with like your combo routes. Uh, wall splats. This is the big one because wall splats, like I've mentioned like several times before, and I keep saying like I mentioned, <laughs> they do 30 wall splat damage after a shift, um, and it resets neutral of uh, in field phase. But because it does 30 damage, it doesn't like it's 30 free damage. But because of that, it doesn't kill obviously. <clears throat> but because people think oh it's the optimal thing to do because especially since they think oh they're left with one hp that's really good but if there was something you could have done that was better you still are just forcing another mix-up and that's just kind of a it's just kind of a sucky scenario sometimes especially since i mentioned i keep saying that can i just stop saying that it's just a habit i got <laughs> um but it's just a very sucky situation if you just end up losing that situation and then immediately just plummet and get bodied right after. That's happened to me a few times before I started doing like JY and Leaf Storm stuff. Uh, for like, oh, I don't like, I don't know what else to call this optimal round finishers, but it just feels so weird. <laughs> um, yeah, and obviously it's just a preference thing too. If you bother to learn about these, this will definitely help your like game plan and like finisher finishing your combos. I've already mentioned why it's important in other pros to it. But obviously, if you don't want to learn it, it's not the biggest thing you have to learn in Pokémon. It's just a thing that I feel like a lot of people could be doing a lot better. Uh, and, like, it is sick when you, like, finish around like that. Like, there's a lot of least storms where people are like, oh, this won't kill. And then it kills, and they're like, oh my gosh! So I guess that's another pro, you'll just be sick. <laughs>
Uh, in conclusion, optimizing combos in specific ways for low health situations can result in winning the round as opposed to the- Okay, that's a lot of work. Why'd I type all that? Uh, but- <laughs> No, but- <laughs> No, but basically optimizing helps a lot, which is like, guaranteeing the round, like I said. Uh, I hate it when I just die after one mix-up. That happens a lot. <laughs> um... Actually, and looking back at this, it's just like a lot of types of moves actually do that. Mostly the moves that are just kind of like multi-hit, but do like one damage. So like, I think like Septile 5 y is like that. Um, and then a lot of moves like that are single hit, but don't do like crazy amounts of damage. Like if I were to give like a... I say 6 is like the least before a move is like, for a single hitting move to be useful in these combos. I would say, yeah, I would say that would be the like... The least amount so like six and above is good for using in combos obviously you're going to need to use moves that need to be used to go into those combos that are like don't qualify into those categories of being like multi hits that do two or more damage or like very very strong but that's fine just always try to find the opportunity to use those moves is what i mean and here we go again i mentioned this before <laughs> it's something you don't need to know right away about Definitely learn the game, like, everything else about the game. This is just something I recommend learning about if you can, and you feel want to put the time into, like, finding, like, I guess you could say these are, like, kind of custom combos at, at that point, to find, like, the optimal combo to finish off the opponent. Obviously, some characters can be a lot harder to do that with. Uh, Septile is definitely one of the easier characters, along with Scizor and uh, Darkrai. Some characters, I feel like Lucario would be pretty tough to do just because he's kind of like, he's got a lot of like single hits or like multi hits that are like supposed to be comboed. So I feel like his Bone Rush Slam should be really, really good in that case. Uh, so always keep that in mind, Lucario means. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> Please like, comment, and subscribe, all that good stuff. No, but seriously, guys. Uh, I know it's pretty off the walls kind of video because this is the first time I've ever done something like this. Uh, and sorry if there's like any cuts obviously, but I'm very, very bad at doing things in a single take. But drop a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next time. No, but like, if you could do all that, that'd be, I appreciate that a lot. Helps the channel a lot. Thank you. Bye. God, I'm so awkward. Help.